Hi everyone. In this video, I am continuing the previous uh, variable attenuator concept. So, in the last video, I have discussed the, I have started this wave, uh, waveguide attenuators and seen what are the different uh, types of waveguide attenuators and what do you mean by waveguide attenuator and the types of waveguide attenuators like uh, fixed attenuator and variable attenuator. So, in the variable attenuator, the variable attenuators are again different for uh, different waveguides. If it is a rectangular waveguide, that may be a flap uh, type or vane type. If it is a circular waveguide, that will be a rotary type. Now, let us see what do you mean by flap type, vane type and rotary type. See, in the flap type, there is a resistive cord that is used in the, in the shape of a flap that is being inserted or coming out from the waveguide with a short cut over the waveguide. See the figure, then you can understand what I am speaking about. See, here this is the rectangular waveguide. Rectangular waveguide, we know, you know very well from the previous uh, few classes onwards, I have been saying how the rectangular waveguide shape will be. It is having a breadth A and width B. Okay, this is A and this is B. Now, along this this is the direction of propagation through which your wave is going to be traveled. This is the direction of propagation. Now, this is the resistive cord. This is the resistive cord that, what do you mean by resistive cord? That is used to absorb the electromagnetic power. Resistive cord is nothing but it is a device that is used to absorb, that is used to absorb the electromagnetic power. This resistive cord is uh, designed in such a way where it can go inside and coming out through a short slot cut over the waveguide. See, it is the place where the resistive cord can be inserted inside or taken out. Okay, in that phase, that phase type of feasibility flexibility is there here. Okay. How the resistive cord will go in and coming out that is going to be rotated by a adjustable knob here. See, is there is a dial here, there is a dial here and over which we have an adjustable knob. That adjustable knob is a knob where we can hold it with hand and rotate in the upward direction and in the bottom or clockwise or anti-clockwise. So, if we rotate this in the clockwise direction then this resistive cord will go inside and it provides a maximum attenuation okay suppose if we rotate this adjustable knob in the anti clockwise direction then the resistive cord will go, will come up and there is no attenuation ex existed okay suppose if you want to fix that particular uh, place particular place okay then we have to lock this screw by using this locking screw we will keep at one position under locking this screw means we cannot uh, letter that is fixed until we again lose this screw okay so in this way we can uh, make the variable attenuation method using this resistive cord or we can say it's a flap where it goes and comes out from that particular slot Okay, so flap type, flap type attenuator consists of a resistive element or cord or disc we can also say inserted into a longitudinal slot cut along the center of the which direction narrower or wider narrower means b side and wider means a side so wider dimension along the wider dimension 
of the waveguide. Of the waveguide. So, this type of resistive cord is responsible for the attenuation. So, this resistive cord is responsible for the attenuation. That's why if it is going inside, maximum inside, then it gives a more amount of attenuation. If it is coming out, then it is less attenuation. This is flap type. Okay. Now, coming to the um, way in which it is going to be appeared when it is going inside and when it is coming out. Okay. So, this is the maximum attenuation diagram when the resistive cord resistive cord completely goes inside and this is resistive cord resistive cord taken out that means completely it is taken out and it is completely inserted so if it is completely inserted it will be having maximum attenuation if it is taking out it will be minimum attenuation so flap type is flap is a flap is mounted on the hinged arm hinged arm allowing it to descend into the center of waveguide center of the waveguide so degree of attenuation degree of attenuation can be determined degree of attenuation can be determined by the depth of by the depth of insertion by the depth of insertion so suppose if we have taken it out to minimum attenuation if we have taken it inside completely the resistive cord gives a maximum attenuation so the depth of insertion gives the amount of attenuation so this is the flap type attenuator now coming to vein type variable attenuator vein type variable attenuator is also the uh, experiment is similar to that uh, fixed attenuator but here it is having a different structure compared to that fixed uh, compared to that normal uh, uh, flap type uh, variable attenuator so the vein position at the center the vein position at the center of the waveguide can be moved literally from the center can be moved literally from the center where it provides a maximum attenuation to the edges where the attenuation is considerably reduced since e lines are always concentrated at the center of the waveguide see here whenever the electric field is going to be transmitted like this these e electric fields are absorbed by this material which is inserted at this particular place so if it is at the center it gives maximum attenuation if it is at one end it gives minimum attenuation okay we can say here the uh, hole is made the hole to hold that particular um, uh, what is that resistive card which is going which is which has been inserted that mobile vein is having an arm that is used to hold the uh, arm from the outer side here the hole is made on the narrower side whereas the, in the previous case the hole is made in the wider side but here the hole is made in the narrower side the vein is having an arm that is used to hold to move to and fro inside the waveguide 
okay so we can simply make it as a movement there is a movement can be applied inside and outside depending upon the arm here the hole is made the hole is made on the which side narrower side narrow dimension side nothing but b side okay i will write here nothing but b side b side see here this is b side and this one is a okay so this bolt is used to hold this particular vein when it is at the center it gives maximum attenuation this is the diagram and when it is at the corner it gives minimum attenuation okay now coming to the third type rotary type variable attenuator rotary type variable attenuator is nothing but it is used to what is the purpose of rotary type variable attenuator rotary type variable attenuator is used in the circular waveguides circular waveguide see here the input is like your rectangular waveguide where the electric field is in the upward direction like this and this is electric again a rectangular waveguide but inside which we have a <coughs> resistive waveguide see the resistive veins are used this is the resistive variable attenuator which is connected the center of these two waveguides okay the waveguide one is having a resistive cord waveguide two is having a resistive cord which is a circular waveguide and waveguide three is a converter from rectangular to circular it is also a it is also having a resistive cord resistive vein okay see here when the electric field goes and touches this resistive vein the electric field goes like this and whenever it touches the resistive vein inside the circular waveguide the vertically polarized signal that will be converted into horizontally polarized signal that means 90 degrees shift will be occurred in the resistive vein of the circular waveguide so it gives e cos theta and when this signal tra travels through this uh, third waveguide which is having another resistive waveguide again it gives a original orientation like a vertical polarization of the signal like 90 degrees plus it will be adding okay so that 90 degrees plus and 90 degrees minus are depending upon the position of the resistive veins that are connected so i will write here a resistive rotary vein type a resistive rotary vein attenuator resistive rotary vein attenuator provides precision attenuation with an energy of plus or minus 2.1 percent of indicated attenuation over the operating frequency range okay generally the vein type rotary attenuator gives a uh, attenuation range that is just plus or minus 2.1 2.1 percent or approximately 2 percent compared to the indicating range <coughs> it consists of as i said here it consists of three veins it consists of three veins the central vein rotating type placed in the central section of circular waveguide arrangement tapered at both ends tapered at both ends 
okay so it consists of three veins this is the first one and this is second one and this is third one as mentioned here so it consists of three veins the central vein rotating type this is the rotating type place in the control section of circular waveguide arranged in the tapered at both ends okay so this is uh, this is all about your uh, rectangle uh, waveguides and they attenuator okay waveguide attenuator like a fixed type variable attenuator or variable type attenuator in the uh, variable type uh, wave uh, attenuator the, there are again two types so one is uh, uh, flap type another one is the vein type and the if, if we consider a rectangular waveguide these two coming under a rectangular waveguide if you go for a circular waveguide again a rotary type of variable attenuator is also available thank you